Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we are taking a look at Knuckles the Echidna, from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Knuckles is a huge, red echidna, contrasting with the blue speedster through its sheer strength. And, just like Sonic, it has the virtue of looking nothing like an actual echidna. Hence, I figured it would be fun to take a look at it and try to adapt it into our style. And with its own TV show having come out not long ago, it sure is a good time to reimagine him and the rest of the echidna tribe into real living animals. So here's a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this, and to our patrons and channel members for their support. If you too are enjoying our videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing, joining our patron, or becoming a channel member to get early looks at all our creatures. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Reproductive isolation, the inability of certain species or populations to breed with each other, is a key component of the development of new species, especially as a population is geographically isolated and evolves in a very different manner than its close relatives something that can be observed in island-dwelling animals, such as today's research subject. The white-knuckled echidna, scientifically named Artechinos megacaira, are native to Angel Island, which can be found in the same archipelago inhabited by the sonic hedgehog, although they have since migrated to nearby islands. As can be inferred from their colloquial name, these animals evolved from smaller, ancestral echidnas that migrated to this archipelago through rafting events during the Ice Age. Their arrival into a somewhat colder, more northern set of islands favored the increase of size in these echidnas, both as an adaptation to the cold and as a case of island giantism. As they grew larger, the amount of quills in its body gradually decreased, as its need to protect itself from predation became much less pressing their reddish coloration being enough to hide them from other animals among the rocks and vegetation. Just like their smaller relatives, these echidnas are excellent diggers thanks to their huge claws and very strong anterior limbs. They will dig deep burrows to hide in and rest during the hottest part of the day, but they will also create vast tunnels as they hunt for prey, using their electroreception, common to all monotremes, to detect prey hiding in the muddy soil. Their mandibles are much stronger than those of other echidnas, better adapted for crushing and swallowing larger prey, including small mammals and reptiles, but their lack of teeth prevents them from taking down bigger prey. As well adapted as they are for digging, however, white knuckled echidnas are very versatile being capable of swimming and even climbing with relative ease, a must for animals that inhabit such a mountainous habitat. While climbing rock is a very useful skill in this environment, characterized by its tall cliffs and steep slopes, they are also quite good at climbing trees, which they often do as they seek for bird eggs, which they use to supplement their diet. Their tail proportionately much longer than that of other echidnas, helps them brace against the trees and rocky slopes as they climb. While climbing up is easy enough for these animals, climbing down is an entirely different matter. But this echidna is not powerless before even this challenge, as it will manage to get down thanks to its few remaining quills. These quills are much longer and softer than those of other echidnas, and are covered in skin and fur, which stretches between the quill and the kidna's back. These quills can be erected and held to form a set of cells, which are believed to have originally evolved as a way to help these echidnas dissipate heat as the ice age ended and their habitat became hotter. In modern times, these cells have found a new purpose. When the white knuckled echidna needs to descend from a high place, it will erect its quills, and the unfolded skin membrane will act as a patagium, 
similar to that of flying squirrels. While not enabling the echidna to glide with as much grace as some animals are capable of, they will catch the air and help this animal obtain small amounts of lift thus reducing their speed and allowing them to safely jump down from branch to branch or from rock to rock, until safely returning to the ground. White knuckled echidnas are extremely territorial, shunning even other members of their species. They will react very aggressively to the presence of potential competitors in their territory and will angrily drive them away by force being capable of causing very serious injuries with its strong claws or by ramming with their heavy body. This territoriality is even more pronounced, as would be expected, when the echidna is caring after its egg or brood. White knuckled echidnas usually lay a single egg, which is green in color due to its high concentrations of biliverdine, the pigment that gives certain bird eggs their blue or green coloration. This pigment is obtained through their diet, which includes biliverdine-rich animals, such as small lizards, insects, and bird eggs. And this pigment is then incorporated to the egg, along with a great amount of calcium, an adaptation that made these eggs much more resistant as the echidna grew in size. Given the more mobile lifestyle of these echidnas, they no longer keep this egg inside of the mother's pouch as they risk damaging it by doing so. Instead, this egg will be kept inside deep burrows, which the mother will protect all day and night, leaving only to hunt and drive potential dangers away, very rarely losing direct line of sight with their burrow. Once the puggle is born, it will be transported inside the mother's pouch as she hunts. Interestingly, Given their solitary lifestyle and lack of socialization, these echidnas are among the few mammals that present almost no play behavior, a rarity among even other echidnas. Unfortunately, this same solitary lifestyle and highly aggressive behavior can, at times, end up spelling their doom. Predators acting in a coordinated manner are capable of distracting the echidna forcing it out of its burrow in order to pursue the potential attacker, while another member of its pack steals the egg, a tactic sometimes taken advantage of by smarter social predators and unethical researchers that no longer work for us. This, however, is not enough to severely threaten these echidnas, as the potential danger of being trapped with a white-knuckled echidna inside its burrow makes this more of a desperate tactic than a regular hunting strategy. Due to their geographical proximity, some populations of white knuckled echidna and sonic hedgehog have been known to share their habitat, which has led to occasional competition between both species, as they need to keep each other out of their turf in order to claim uncontested access to certain prey animals. However, an interesting phenomenon has arisen in some of these places, where echidna and hedgehog have been seen cooperating in a manner similar to coyotes and badgers, hunting as a team. When small, burrowing prey try to escape the relatively slow-running echidna, they will be caught by the hedgehog, and when they run to their underground burrows to escape the quick and nimble runner, they will be caught by the burrowing echidna. Thus, this behavior improves the chances of both predators catching prey. And that's it for Speculative Biology Look into Knuckles. And, just like with Sonic, we had a lot of fun trying to figure out how on earth this creature could ever be meant to be an echidna. I mean, we could just have not made him an echidna, but with it being its official species, we decided it would be more fun to roll with it and see where it got us. Of course, this meant finding the right way to give this echidna its notable in-game abilities, such as its great strength, ability to borrow, and gliding. Oh gods, the gliding! 
While many things were already reasonable enough for echidnas, with them being strong borrowing animals, gliding was something else entirely. For this, aided by the awesome input from our patrons, we looked to their canon habitat, a floating mountainous island, and figured gliding would be an interesting adaptation for animals in such a place, especially if they needed to climb the steep slopes of their home. And, it may sound weird, but as I researched, it turned out there are lots of animals capable of both climbing and digging. Like, really, it seems climbing is way easier than I originally expected it to be. The anatomy of Knuckles himself, while challenging, was not as hard to work on as that of its blue counterpart. Most of it adapted quite well aside from the bipedality which was removed in order to make it more of an animal and less of an intentionally anthropomorphized character. His headstrong and impulsive personality, meanwhile, were easy enough to adapt as a result of it being a solitary, highly aggressive animal, and it was a lot of fun to adapt its character as a guardian of the Master Emerald into it simply being protective about its bright green egg. This was a really fun episode to work on, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.